One of the handiest skills in histology is being able to tell the difference between the three types of muscle tissue. Um, you can learn a lot about a tissue that you are viewing or an organ um, from looking at the composition of any muscle tissue that might be there. It's a pretty handy skill. So we're going to look at, um, if I can get my pen to write, there we go. We're going to look at how to tell muscle apart. So as you might already know, or if you don't, there are three fundamental types of muscle tissue. The first is skeletal muscle. This is voluntary muscle. This is what your biceps are made out of, and your quads, and your other muscles that you have conscious control over. That's skeletal muscle. Another important muscle type is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is going to be found lining organs, enabling them to move. You have smooth muscle in the iris of your eye. It's responsible for dilation and contraction of your pupils. So smooth muscle is all over, and it is involuntary. And then finally, a very specialized type of muscle is cardiac muscle tissue. This is muscle tissue uh, that is found only in the heart and it has special, uh, several special characteristics uh, that make it especially good at um, pumping blood. So what I'm going to do is show you some pictures of different um, micrographs of muscle tissue, let you know what they are, and kind of point out some of the features that help me uh, recognize which type of muscle that I'm looking at. Okay, so let's begin with skeletal muscle, which is the most common and uh, the most uh, well-known. So here is some skeletal muscle tissue. So we can recognize its muscle because in most um, histological preparations, the cytoplasm of muscle cells are going to stain nice and pink for us. There's a lot of protein in there, um, a lot of basic proteins, and so they're, they're going to stain nice and pink. So when you see lots of pink, think muscle. Now, also notice that the cells are arranged in long, thin fibers. These are the myofibers, or muscle cells, or myocytes, those are all three synonyms, that are going to make up the skeletal muscle tissue. So we know it's muscle because we see a lot of pink and it's fibrous. Okay, so those are our two kind of characteristics for muscle in general. It is both pink and it is arranged into fibers. My eyes always come out skinny in this thing. Okay, so how do we know that this is specifically skeletal muscle, right? All these things tell us is that it's muscle. How do we know that it's skeletal muscle? Well, let's look at a couple of things. One, look very closely right down here. And you'll notice that the cells appear to have little stripes in them. Now, the images that I'm going to be using here are fairly uh, middle road magnification. This is a 400x image. And uh, so we're not going to get extreme detail in here. And I'm doing that for a very specific reason. Uh, most students in uh, general anatomy and physiology classes, you know, human AMP1, they're not going to have access to oil immersion lenses on their microscopes. So 40x objective magnification or 400x total mag is generally the best they're going to get. So that's the highest magnification we're going to look at anything. However, that's still plenty of magnification to get a good idea of what it is you're looking at. So if we look in this area that I've circled here, you'll notice, notice that the tissue appears to be kind of striped. You can also see really well right up here, the cell above the line I'm drawing, that the stripes are nice and obvious. So our fancy science word for something that has lots of stripes is striated. So skeletal muscle tissue is striated. Now another thing that lets me know that this is skeletal muscle, because not skeletal muscle isn't the only one that's striated, is if we look at the individual muscle fibers, they generally run pretty straight. Like look at this guy, right? It's running in one long straight line. Uh, the fibers don't branch. So skeletal muscle has striated fibers, and the fibers are also unbranched. This will become important here in just a minute. And then finally, look at any one fiber, follow it along, and count the number of nuclei. 
um, you'll notice that you appear to see quite a few purple nuclei studded in here. This isn't really all that helpful because this is a three-dimensional um, this is a three-dimensional tissue and so you might be seeing nuclei from cells above and below but just kind of as a general tip if you see lots of nuclei in it then it's more likely to be m skeletal muscle um, than some other brand of muscle tissue okay let's look at one other turn that off look at one other um, image and again we can see much better that the fibers are long and continuous we see lots of nuclei in each individual fiber so skeletal muscle cells tend to have many nuclei per cell we can see the striations here so we see that these are striated we see that we follow these fibers along that they are unbranched and we see that the cells tend to be polynucleate okay so these are our characteristics for skeletal muscle so this is again skeletal muscle alright so let's look at another kind of muscle tissue um, and we're gonna look first at a low magnification so this is only 200 X magnification <clears throat> but um, we can tell that this will mu this is muscle tissue because why? What do we see? Lots and lots of pink. So when we see lots of pink, that's going to tell us muscle tissue. Now, if we look closely, um, even without the magnification turned up, right? This is only 200x. But if we look at these fibers, we can see like right down here. Here's a fiber coming along, and then it splits. See that branch right there? And again, we see right here, we see some branching taking place and here we've got some branching and then it merges back together or anastomosis so when we see lots of branching that's going to give us a clue now that branching is enough um, for somebody who's experienced to tell what kind of muscle tissue this is but there's one other thing one other feature that you have to look really close at low magnification to see um, that really gives this stuff away and if you look right down here so I'm gonna circle an area and you see three little lines that appear to be going through the muscle tissue I know the magnification is not the greatest here but the point I'm trying to make is you can distinguish these things even without lots of high magnification and really good optics this was taken on essentially a student microscope but you see those little lines right there those little guys are called intercalated intercalated discs and those are the hallmark feature of cardiac muscle now you can't tell from this picture but if I uh, increase the magnification a little bit you can see that this tissue is also striated but the striations aren't as evident in this particular slide um, I've seen other slides that are more well prepared that weren't quite as inexpensive as these were where the striations are much more easily visible but if we look at this higher magnification image so this is 400x we can see here that we have some branching of this cell so this cell branches um, we can see this one branching here so we have our branching and then more importantly we have this feature right here in between this line I'm drawing that is the intercalated disc so when we see branching and intercalated discs that can only be one thing and that is cardiac muscle okay now there's one more kind of muscle tissue we need to look at and again I'm gonna start out at low magnification so here we are at 200 X and again we see this big mass of pink tissue so that's our big clue that this is muscle tissue but what we don't see is striations so we see no striations well hmm that's not in itself proof of what this is because we've shown in that cardiac muscle tissue that even though it is striated muscle the striations aren't always all that visible but what we also don't see is distinct fibers 
Do you see any distinct fibers here? No, it just looks like kind of a big mass of pink, so there are no distinct fibers. And I need to slow down with my writing so that my letters show up better. So we have no striations, no distinct fibers, so there can't be branching or unbranching because the fibers are really not all that distinct. So when you see all of these no's, it doesn't look like skeletal muscle, it doesn't look like cardiac muscle, but it sure is pink. And I would like to call this muscle tissue. And our only option left then is smooth muscle. So this is that involuntary smooth muscle. All right, let's look at a higher magnification. And again, you can see it's non-striated. And that smooth muscle cells, the cell borders aren't very visible here, but smooth muscle cells are actually rather uh, spindle-shaped, kind of like that. And then they overlap, something like this. So a smooth muscle fiber, that's not very good drawing there, but you can kind of get the idea. So a smooth muscle fiber has these overlapping kind of spindle-shaped cells. And so we don't see those really nice columnar fibers like we see in cardiac muscle and in skeletal muscle. But the cells are more or less kind of linearly arranged. And again, we see lots of nuclei here, um, which we don't see in cardiac muscle. So we don't see any striations. We don't see any branching. So there's no striations. There's no branching. There are no distinct filaments. And we have lots of nuclei. So that tells me that this is smooth muscle. All right, so just really quick to review, skeletal muscle is going to be striated. So we're going to see stripes, even at low mag, but especially at higher mags. It's going to be unbranched. So the fibers are going to be distinct, and they're not going to branch. So we're going to have distinct fibers. And we're going to have many nuclei per cell. Smooth muscle, so switch colors here. Smooth muscle is unstriated or non-striated. I can't, don't know which would be more appropriate here, but it's not striated. Um, it is not arranged in distinct fibers. And we also have many nuclei per cell. And then cardiac muscle is going to be striated, but not as evidently striated as skeletal muscle. The striations are going to be more subtle. Um, it is branched, unlike the other two. It is in distinct fibers. And generally, you're only going to see two nuclei per cell, so much fewer nuclei. All right, so that's how I tell the difference between the three different types of muscle tissue. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next video.